Georgia 9. All right, representing Ginger 9, founder and CEO, Alexander Diaz. Give him a warm welcome, Alexander. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alexander Diaz, and I'm the founder and CEO of Ginger 9. Ginger 9 is a sour cherry liqueur from Portugal, 100% natural and crafted with no added colors or preservatives. The story of Ginger 9 dates back to the 17th century to the Portuguese monks from a small region called Obidos in Portugal, and they were introduced to the fruit by the Roman Empire. The Romans, throughout their conquerors in Europe, uh, they would carry, of course, a large amount of troops, and their diet was very heavily at the time. Sour cherry was known to have a property because it was very acidic to help them with their digestion. Uh, so they will always carry the fruit with them through different countries in Europe. So when they get to Portugal, to this little village in Obidus, they start planting ginger trees. Ginger is the Portuguese word for sour cherry. At their first harvest, they realized that the fruit was sweeter than normal, and they were delighted by that. In fact, the Portuguese monks weren't really a fan of the fruit because it was so bitter. And even like that, that was sweeter at the time, they didn't really enjoy it. Back then, the monks were known by making their own wine, their own beer, their own liqueur. So they start infusing the sour cherries in alcohol, the steel from rice and cereal, uh, and that the fruit will sit there for one year. At the end of the process, they will sweeten it up a little bit with rock cane, rock cane sugar, and that's actually how we make ginger nine now. The monks were very attractive to the sour cherries because they're at, to make the liqueur, because at the time when the Romans left, Obidus, they also left behind a large amount of ginger trees, and there was an abundance of the fruit. So the monks really tried to take up the most of that fruit at the time. Obis is also known by their chocolate festival. Uh, it's probably the biggest one uh, in the country, and that's why it's natural to pair the liqueur with chocolate, and that's the traditional way of having it right now, and that's how you're indulging it in the uh, dark chocolate cup. The other way that is one of my favorite ways is that you can enjoy this over ice. It's super refreshing. In the past years, Portugal has become a very attractive destination. Uh, with a lot of visitors and tourists. Uh, Americans are no exception to that. Uh, so they go to Lisbon, Porto, Obidus, and there are a lot of taverns, small taverns, that you can get ginger in a shot glass or in a dark chocolate cup. And um, it is really popular because all the touristic guys, all the tourist industry really focused right now in ginger. I would probably say it's probably the next port from Portugal. Uh, it is really popular throughout the country. And that's how I really start in getting involved uh, with uh, Ginger 9. There's people that are coming back from Portugal and are really fans of this sour cherry liqueur, the ways it indulge. Um, and it's been a passion for me as well uh, since I was young. I was introduced to it by my grandfather uh, at a very young age. I think I was 21 at the time, 21 months. <laughs> yes, we do indulge these delicacies at a very young age in Portugal. Um, in the interior of the country, where my grandfather, where grandfathers are from, there's um, a competition pretty much between a family. Everyone makes their own wine, their own ginger, their own olive oil. So your cousin, your uncle, your grandfather, they all want you to taste and get your feedback at a very young age. And that's really how my passion started for, uh, for Ginger 9. And I've been very fortunate for the past year to be sharing this story, this tradition, with the market here and um, doing as well with you all today. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. All right, let's turn it over to the judges and find out what they think of our final entrant today. Tell us what the little cup is and how we should consume this. So the little cup, we import <laughs> the cups from Belgium. Um, the cups are dairy-free. They're made of soy milk, so they're low-calorie. 
as well. And the particular thing about that chocolate cup that makes the, a perfect pairing with the liqueur <coughs> is the amount of cocoa that it contains, or cacao, that the chocolate cup contains. Usually, chocolate, dark chocolate is between 16, 70%. This one is 72%, that it makes it even darker, so for a better pairing with, uh, with the liqueur. I would drink it before I ate the chocolate, though. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> so this is the limoncello of, of Portugal. It's not lemon flavored, but every family makes their own. Yeah. It's something that you, you want yeah, to show off. Yeah, back in the days. Yeah, yeah back, not now, not now. Now is really commercial. Uh, this really took off in an exponential way in Portugal in the past years, much because of tourism. Uh, Portugal is definitely an attractive destination. They were considered last year one of the best cities in the world to visit. So there's a huge amount of visitors. Uh, is it served as an aperitivo on the rocks like this? Correct, okay. correct, yes. Uh, we also are doing uh, other things for the US market. By being a low ABV, it's only 18% because of the way it's distilled. It pairs very well with hard liquor, so it can make great cocktails. We do cherry mimosas that are tremendously um, flavorful, it pairs very well with champagne, and our signature cocktail is the mojito. You know, called Chinai Mojito. The other part is that I thought was interesting is that I was envisioning it also is that you could mix it with a, a cream like a, almost a rum chata mm -hmm. and a homogenize it and, and it would be a very distinct flavor that I think would be desirable. Yes, that's a, that's a great observation. Uh, in Portugal, our producers started to do it, to mix it with dairy and they do it in a very interesting way, not just dairy, but also we have what is called in Portuguese piri piri, that is like the chili and uh, malagueta in, in, mm -hmm. in Spanish, and it's a, a great flavor. I think it would also pair very well with whiskey, especially bourbon because of the whole, like, you know, call it a ginger old fashioned or something. Uh -huh. You're right on the point. We do have a mixologist that uh, in our website we have several cocktails and one of them is with, uh, with bourbon and, and whiskey. Actually, we were at, uh, at the show. Right? Yes, <laughs> you, know, you know your stuff. What does this retail for? So the bottle retails between uh, $27.99 and $30. Can we see the bottle? Absolutely. The other great thing about mixing it with a whiskey is I, I wasn't a big fan of the nose, but the finish I loved. Like the flavor is fantastic. Smooth as silk. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and it was just a nice lasting long finish. Mm -hmm. But that, that the nose kind of surprised, or started off, it surprised me. So I think it actually works better in cocktails, potentially, than, than by itself on, on, on the rocks. Mm. Right about the nose. Yeah, the, um, so we have also a, a package that I used to call it my silent salesperson mm -hmm. on the shelf. Uh, we don't have it here today, but it's similar to a gift set that it contains the bottle and eight chocolate cups. Ah. So that has been very popular be for people, for birthday parties, to party dinners, to bring to their guests. It's a different way really of, instead of bringing the regular bottle of wine, it's something unique. In, in and also thing. because Portugal is so well known, of course, for port, I think this is kind of an alternative for that over alcohol uh, driven port. It's, it's especially for a woman's palate, I think. How, yeah. are you, how are you doing in the U.S.? Like, how, what's your... So we, st we started uh, uh, around a year ago yeah. in California. We did a soft launch. Uh, in the beginning, I was trying to get a proof of concept because this is really a novelty in the market. Uh, when people ask me what it tastes like, I really don't know how to explain you. You have to taste it. So throughout festivals, trade shows, and private events, I believe we did last year over 40,000 individual tastings and the chocolate cups. Um, to get the feedback and to get a proof of concept, sure. the feedback has been tremendously yeah. good. Did you say 40,000? Yeah, I know that because I ordered two pallets of chocolates from, uh, from Belgium, and each pallet has 22,000 chocolate cups. So I went through all of those. That's a pretty good proof of concept. Do any of you find the font difficult to read? The, the name? I, I think, and, and is nine necessary? Could you just call it Ginja? No, so the, the name is Ginja Nine. Oh, Ginja is a Portuguese word for sour cherry. And the reason okay. we kept the name Ginja is because if you go to Portugal and ask for one, you ask for a Ginja. 
or a Jinjinja. So when they come, they coming back, they recognize the name Jinja. They're familiar with it. But does it have to have the number nine on it? No. And, and I'm just challenging the font is a little bit difficult to read at first well, glance when you look also at it. Also because we don't know what Jinja is. I was thinking it was a ginger. And I was thinking it was a sake, a ginjo. Ah, yeah. I was thinking more of an oriental drink too. Yeah. I, I would not have anticipated be, and it's a pleasant beverage, it really is. It really it is. Like Thank a you. ginseng. Actually yeah. the name ginger yeah. comes from the Orient because that's how the Romans really were introduced to the fruit yeah, it's great. in Asia. Tell us about the small bottles. So the small bottles are gourmet bottles. Um, right now we have a limited edition on them. They are 200 milliliters. They retail around for $19.99. Um, very good quality glass. The glass here is from Germany. And the particular thing about these bottles, everything that you see here is handcrafted. The cap is actually cork, so you can reuse the bottle to put olive oil or anything that you want. They're very, very popular. This is something that actually I think chefs would also like to yeah. use. Uh, it almost looks like a cooking a vinegar <laughs> or something, that, but it's, I think it would make a great ingredient. We do have a restaurant in LA that uses sour cherry liqueur, the ginger nine, for their steak. Because when they, they're cooking the steak, they burn all the alcohol and it's just the flavor of the sour cherry stays there. Yep. Uh, it's very, very good. All right, well, thank you so much, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, judges. Okay, well, those are all our competitors, and now it's time to hear from our judges and from all of you. It's voting time to find out who will win this year's brand battle. So let's watch this clip, which will show you exactly how to vote for the winner and the runner-up. Okay, and now I invite all of you, including our judges, to go ahead and vote for your first choice, followed by second choice. And you can see the live voting results are up on the screen. Oh, this is so exciting. Who's gonna win? Who do you think's gonna win? Shout it out. Who do you think's gonna win? Yeah, I got the cheat sheet, huh? It's not over yet. Keep voting, there's a lot of people in the room. Looks like it's a tight race for runner-up. Wow. All right, well, it looks like our voting is finalized now, so let's first bring out our runner-up with 97 votes. Please, uh, uh, let's give a congratulations to Rosé Piscine. There he is. Congratulations, Blake. Big round of applause for Blake and Rose Machine. Come on out front here. Yeah. Photo up. Congratulations. Let's hear it one more time for Rose Piscine. All right, I know there's a lot of suspense now. This year's 2018 WSWA Brand Battle Champion. Let's blow the roof off this room as we congratulate 
Gray Whale Gin. Absolutely. Congratulations. Yep, there you go, and this is for you. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2018 Brand Battle Champion, Grey Whale Jin. This is for you. Oh, wow. I hold it for you. Hang tight while we finish up the photos. One more photo. All right, on behalf of WSWA, the beautiful Caesars Palace, all of our judges, and myself, Tobin Ellis, we'd like to thank you so much for coming and joining us for Brand Battle at the 75th Annual WSWA. Thank you so much. Please, coffee or water break while we turn the room over so my good friend and colleague, Tony Ebugenum, can kick off our next session. Thank you so much. Vegas, baby.